up and at him. Stevie. I'm awake, Ma. I'm awake. Now, don't give me that old routine about I'm just resting my eyes. I've already cheated enough for both of us. I set the alarm clock ahead 15 minutes last night. Oh, it's laundry day, so don't put your pajamas under the pillow, huh? And also, it's cold outside, so you might as well wear your red sweater. And since you're wearing a sweater, you can wear a white shirt underneath it. And your brown slacks, I think, would do. And that new bow tie. What, again? I thought we weren't going to play fireman anymore. Hope you put on clean underwear. I did everything, see? Let me see. Pretty good. Let me see your nails. Yeah. Yeah, you did do everything, didn't you? No, Mom, no, you mustn't. Mustn't what? Do things like this anymore. What? I mean, you can't do the hard things. Like making up my bed. Oh, honey, now wait a minute. It's all right, Ma. Dad explained how you changed and and everything. We had a big discussion. Oh, really? When? Sometimes when he comes in late at night, I wake up and. Yeah, yeah, you wake up and what? And we have discussions. Oh, about me? About your condition. And now we decided it's time. For you to do just the easy jobs. And Dad said for me to be sure to take your arm when we're crossing streets and when we're riding the subway to be sure people don't bump into you. I think that's very sweet of you and Daddy, Steve. But tell me, just what do you consider an easy job, huh? You can dress yourself. <laughs> Two against one's no fair. You know what I need around here is, uh... Another woman on my side. You'll get one. Dad and me decided that, too. It's going to be a girl. Oh. Well, that'll be very nice. Uh, honey, at your next meeting, I wish you and your dad would make another decision, and a very important one. Where are we going to put, little sister? Sure, Mom. to get a job on the evening paper. Oh. Then he could go to work in the morning like other people do. Oh, honey, he's wanted to for years. Here, finish your milk. But he never will. You know, newspaper man's always going to do something about it tomorrow. 8.30, Mom. Oh, all right, I'll hurry up. I'll be late for work and you'll be late for school again. Where's Daddy's note? Here. Good. Dear Bob, bring home lima beans, paper towels, and two kisses. Strong enough to wake me up. I don't get it. Well, I'm surprised after all those conferences. Right there, come on. Morning, Joe. Well, Mrs. McAvoy, the new editor and publisher just came in. Want me to hold one for the mister? No, no, I'll give it to him. And charge him. See you after work. Uh, I'm not going to work today, or any day. I've just quit my job. That's wonderful. Let's both go back to sleep. Uh, no, darling. Darling, wake up, will you? Come on, wake up. I want you to see an ad. It's something that you've always wanted. Now, just listen to this. For sale, a newspaper man's dream come true. Far from the hectic bustle of the city. And... Bob McAvoy, you pay attention to me. I am, I honest, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you awake? Yeah. All right, now listen to this. There's a country newspaper for sale in California. 
a little town called Eden. And, oh, Bob, it sounds like an absolute paradise. And seven spacious rooms to live in. It's right there, seven spacious rooms. And, oh, darling, what's most important is you can do what you've always wanted to do. Just exactly as you want to do. We've got to do something about it right now, Bob. Uh, right now. Huh? What do we use for money? Oh, well, they only want $2,500 down. All right, what do we use for the $2,500 down? I've been working. And you made me promise not to spend the money on Steve or wait my... Now, wait, now, that money is our in-case money. In case anything happens, that's your security. Oh, darling, you're my security. Oh, well, baby, that's really awfully sweet thing to say. Oh, please, but... can't you see this is our one chance to get out of this rut? Out of these daily separations? And just think of it, no more note writing. Yeah, but darling, I can't... What's happened to all of our wonderful plans? You were going to run your own newspaper with all those new wonderful ideas you were saving up. Oh, please, dear, here it is. Here it is, right here with bells on it. Darling, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, no, we won't. Tomorrow will be too late. Let's talk about it right well, look, now. I've been getting better assignments on the newspaper. Just last night, I had a story. Where's the paper? I saw the paper. And uh, nine lines on page one. Nine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, what's the use? Did you know we'd have to buy a car? Yes, we would, wouldn't we? Circulation, 2,653. That's not bad. <laughs> I'll make you some ham and eggs, huh? wonder which one is ours. I tell you, I'd settle for any one of them. <laughs> so would I. Seven spacious rooms. Aren't the yards wonderful? Look at all those real houses out there and grass. And... No TV aerials. You know, maybe that's good. Maybe that'll mean more advertising for the paper. Suppose happened after they took the picture. Well, offhand, I'd say a couple of historical events, including the assassination of Lincoln. Well, as I always say, <laughs> what is it I always say in a situation like this? Never judge a book by its cover. That's right. Come on. What's inside is more important. Yeah. Right on, oh. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> Both of you, but really, I can manage all right. Thank you. Get my coat with this TV and don't drag it on the ground. Newspaper man's dream come true, huh? You didn't really buy it, did you, Daddy? Yep. What's that real estate man's name, the one we sent the check to? Uh, Fred Hawley. I'm going to kill him. Oh, it's, uh, I really didn't mean that, honestly. Oh, why not? <laughs> Just save me the trouble, that's all. Hello! I give up, I give up. That blasted infernal machine. Be with you folks in a minute. Nellie? Jake Armstrong down at the archive. Get 239J for me, will you? Concern, miss. I ain't seen nothing like it since Grandma got... That you, Homer? Better get over here again. She's spitting ink like a scared octopus. Hurry on over. Man and boy, I've worked around newspapers. It's like it. You know, like I say, some days it don't even pay to get up. <laughs> this is Stevie. Hello, Stevie. I'm Jake Armstrong. Oh, how do you do? Happy to meet you. Thank you. Well, I guess you folks will want to look her over. Yes, we would, This here's the office. Oh? Be careful, ma'am. This press room's pretty dirty. Thank you. Matthew? Matt runs the line of time. Hello, Matthew. I don't recall seeing you before. Oh, no, you haven't. I, huh? I said you haven't. Well, how'd you know my name? Matthew, oh, well, I... this is Mrs. McAvoy. Yeah. Her husband, Bob, here is the new owner. Yes. Oh, no. And such nice folks. Well... Anyway, the linotype seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, yeah. 
She drops O's instead of I's, and sometimes, generally late at night, she lisps. She give you T-H when you want an S. Oh. Great. A lisping linotype and a busted press. Breaks down the same way every week. Press day. Well, uh, how do you print the paper? Well, it's a miracle how we print this paper, but we do it. And every Thursday, there she is being delivered. Oh, all 2,653 copies, huh? What? <laughs> What's funny? That was a circulation 50 years ago. I know how you feel, son. Whoever talked you into taking over this mess? How do you do, Mr. McAvoy? I'm Fred Hawley. That's the man you said you'd kill. Mr. Hawley, how could you do this to us? We believed your ad. We believed it so much that we sold or pawned everything we had in order to buy this newspaper. You ought to be and ashamed I... of yourself. Oh. Mrs. McAvoy. <laughs> Mrs. McAvoy, that old picture of the archive was the only one we had. I sent it out deliberately. But why? Well, I wanted to attract someone like you. I believe in Eden, Mr. McAvoy, and I think there's a great future here for an editor who believes in it. It'll take time. It'll take a lot of work. But look what the mere announcement of a new editor has brought in already. These are ads of welcome to you. How many? Well, there's only five here, but it just goes to show. Show what? The town needs a newspaper. It wants a newspaper. If you're enterprising, this town will get behind you. What do you think, Donnie? Oh, well, you heard the man there. The town's going to get behind you. Well, I'd better get this ad started. Jake, I'd like to try a little something different. You know, this place may be kind of old and broken down, but suddenly there's something rather exciting about it. Maybe there's some of the printer's ink in my... Mr. Holly. Mr. Holly, about our home. Home? Oh. Yes, you know, the seven spacious rooms. Oh, yes, Mrs. Yes, Maggie. Well, I'd like to go there right now, if you don't mind. Certainly, I'll take you right up. Thank you. Wait a minute. Did you say up? Convenient. A seven-room apartment right up those stairs. An apartment? The place gives you a little income, too. Jake and Matthew rent two of the bedrooms. Mr. Hawley. Hello, Freddy. Is the new editor here yet? He's pretty busy right now, Ed. Uh, this is his wife, Mrs. McAvoy. This is Mrs. Spatch, the Stimson Crossing correspondent. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Spatch? How do you do? I've got a scoop. Jake, stop the press. Well, shut up, Ed, you old mule. You know that thing breaks down every press day. Now, look here who you're talking to, uh, Mrs. young man. Mrs. Uh, what is your scoop? Aggie Loveland has yes. finally made up her mind to marry that sailor to that in San Francisco. Uh -huh. And if that ain't a scoop, well, I don't know what is. Of course, Aggie's ma gave me all the dope. Oh, did you write it all down? Oh, no, I want the new editor to do that. Uh -huh. I want a real nice story on the front page. Those Lundgrens are good neighbors. Well, uh, perhaps I can help you. Can you write a real nice story? I think I can manage a little social item like this. Oh, yes. And before I forget it, I want to tell you about the bridesmaids' dresses. Oh, yes. They're to be made of tulle. And oh, they're to be cut way out wide like that. Well, the tops are going to be sort of little jackets, you know? And they're all different colors, just like a rainbow. Well, that'll be lovely. Now, uh, what are the names of the bridesmaids? Oh, now, now you got me again. I think I'd better call up Aggie's ma and let you talk to her. Oh, yes. I'll line up that ad for the market. I'm going to make that one column instead of two. Oh, still is? Yeah, we got to stick to local news. If nobody falls in a well or gets the mumps or dents the fender, we don't sell papers. I see. That all a body can do is pray for a nice fire or an explosion. Bob! Hmm? I have the headline for your first edition. Mm -hmm. Poor child. I just thought it was about your time. Yeah. Well, don't just stand there. Somebody call up Doc Powers. Come on, dear. We gotta get you right upstairs. Yeah. Check. Uh, Check, uh, darling. Why didn't you say something? I did. Are you just gonna sit there at a time like this? Uh, we gotta get her upstairs. Uh, please, but please, please. Just, just, just a minute. I wanna sit down for a minute. Well, is anybody gonna get a doctor? Oh. I will. I'll get the doctor. Say, tell Nellie to call the Cozy Nook Cafe first. The doc's usually there at this time of day. 
Uh, is she, is she b b b bilious? She's going to have a baby. Uh, Stand back, everybody. I don't know anything about a call to Aggie Lundgren. Get me Doc Powers. Do you think you can make it upstairs now, dear? Uh, I don't I... understand. Why do you want to take her upstairs? What's up there? Our seven spacious rooms. Oh, no, no. What we need is a hospital. No time. The nearest one's 40 miles. Got her bed made up? Oh, don't worry, Doc. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Right. Well, yeah. make it. See, I told you I'm last Tuesday. Thinking. You should have taken care of it. Doc's on his way. Where is she? Over there. What can we do? Do you want a police escort to the hospital? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Thank you, God, I never get here. I come as fast as I could. I had some other calls. She's right here. She's where? Behind all those people. I'll carry her upstairs for you. You'll carry her? Say, who do you think you are? I'm Bob McAvoy, her husband. Aren't you the doctor? Doctor? I come to fix the press. Uh, excuse me, can I get in Please, can I get in there? Mr. McAvoy, you better help her upstairs. Yeah, that's just what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Now, 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 I tell you, she's not here. This time, everybody, stand back. Oh, Here. Yeah. Yeah. just beautiful. Isn't she the most perfect thing you ever saw? You're famous. Why, darling, you're wonderful. Getting your first edition out on a day like this. Well, it's not out yet. This is just a proof. Oh. Homer's still down there wrestling with the press, but we're ready to go the minute it starts working. Oh, uh, don't forget, Aggie Lundgren's wedding has to be on the front page. Oh, it's here. Mrs. Spatz saw to that. Oh, good. I wrote about 20 other stories on local events. It's all right, honey. Sit down. I compiled them. Club notes, yeah. church news, and I wrote me my first editorial. Read it to me. Call it strictly personal. Oh, that's nice. It is not an uncommon trait for men to consider themselves superior to women. Mm. Equality of the sexes may be recognized by law, but few men recognize it without reservation. A woman, who is really man's intellectual superior, never lets on. In fact, she encourages her man's conceit. Excuse me. <laughs> I, uh, I just fixed this up for a crib. Why, Miss Batch, that's darling. Yes, yeah, do all right for now. Well, I'll be out in the kitchen if you want anything. Oh, I brought you some soup and whole oh, stuff. <laughs> Didn't want you to go hungry. I think I'll just stick around till Doc Paris gets back. Uh, Miss Patch. Huh? I don't know what I'd have done without you. Oh, child. You see, the trouble with you is you were raised in a big city. If you wanted something, you just called up and got it. Well, around here, there are not so many of us. So whoever can, does. <laughs> Why don't you leave her alone? Two weeks ago, Jane, my wife, encouraged me to buy this newspaper. We arrived in Eden a few hours ago. Since then, she has bolstered the morale of her husband, taken on two boarders. Oh, oh my goodness, I, I guess I can't take this for a shortcut anymore. You see, my, my bedroom is there and the bathroom is over there and I, I usually, excuse me. I like him. Go on, dear. Uh, taken on two boarders. Mm -hmm. Scoop the world on announcing Aggie Lundgren's plans to marry her sailor boy and delivered a beautiful addition to our family, a baby girl. Now, I ask you, what mere male can equal that record of production? I am proud to have her name on the masthead of this paper and want you all to know that the editorial, we of the archive, will, in fact, be us. Bob, it's just beautiful. What's that? Bob! Press! The press is working! Darling, we're going to...
to have a newspaper after all. Never mind, sister. We'll just have to get used to it. This is probably what happens every Thursday. Jane, Steve, sister, and myself are not really horses, though we work as such to make the paper happen every Thursday. <laughs> Very funny young fellow, that McAvoy. Oh, aren't you going to buy it? What for? Already read it. Oh, and uh, our lady's aide is planning a covered supper in the bazaar next oh, Friday. I can promise you front page. Oh, well, that will be nice. Oh, uh, by the way, you and Mr. McAvoy must come. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank you for something, too. You know that little story I told you about Mrs. Ford's first husband? Oh, mm -hmm. Oh, I was scared to death you were going to print it. Oh, not a chance. I knew you just lost your temper. Oh. <laughs> My wife talks too much. Don't ever publish anything, she says. Oh, and Mr. Peterson, uh, there is something I would like to publish. Uh, how about advertising some of these wonderful bargains I've just bought? Why not let the archives tell all of Eden about your unusually low prices? Oh, it's bound to bring results. Well, how can it get results, uh, an ad in a newspaper that nobody reads? Well, more and more people are reading the archive every week. Well, we've brought the circulation up to 700, 703 to be exact. Well, when you bring it up to 1,703, Mrs. McAvoy, then you come back and see me about an ad. All right, Mr. Peterson. I just happened to be passing your hardware store last night, Mr. Brown, and I saw that terrific special that you've got on garden tools. I know that the archive could sell every one of those things overnight. I've drawn up a little ad I'd like to show you. Yeah, ad. Oh, uh, thank you anyway, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Uh, it's all right. May I help you? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Trout? That's me. Oh, well, I'm Jane Archive. I mean, I'm, I'm Jane McAvoy from the Archive, and I want to write a story about your New York trip. You do? Yes. Well, let's go someplace for lunch, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, thank you very much, but I haven't time today. You know, what's the hurry? Uh, well, I have a deadline, Mr. Child. No, I mean about lunch. Well, frankly, I have another luncheon date, you see. Oh, then you do accept an occasional invitation. Oh, <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Well, uh, about the Myron Trout story. Uh, yes. Tell you the truth, I don't care much for New Yorkers. They're always pushing and shoving. Oh. But that show at the Copa. Oh, uh, Copa Cabana? Yeah. yeah, that big nightclub. Oh, yeah. That floor show. Wow, I saw it three times. Indeed. You think I was buying for Sears Roebuck the way I got around. <laughs> it, you're not going to print that in your paper. My wife. Oh. You know, it's murder the way those manufacturers keep us up all night just to sell us a few pair of socks. I understand, Mr. Trout. Um, uh, Myron Trout, Eden's popular haberdasher, returned recently from an exhausting and arduous business trip to New York City, huh? Yeah, <laughs> now, of course, this will just be the caption under your picture. My picture? Yes. And uh, since we're making a cut, we might as well make two prints. One for the front page and one for your ad. What ad? Oh, well, naturally, you want to take an ad in the new archive, like so many of the other businessmen are doing. Now, tell me, would you prefer a one-column ad or would you care for two columns? Well, uh, what would you say if I took a half page? Why, Mr. Trout, I'd say you are a very smart young businessman, which apparently you are. <laughs> now, uh, about the copy, uh, what do you want to say? I'll uh, leave that to you. Oh, fine. I'll uh, make up the layout and bring it over this afternoon. And shall we say about uh, 5.30? Yes, yes, I think I can have the proof ready by then. Goodbye. Uh, my luncheon date. I'll see you later. Oh, 
Oh, think I'd stop this thing for last? Who's the ad for? Myron Trout to the men's shop. Trout? He ain't never advertised before. Oh, well, things are going to be different from now on, Jake. Oh, the old boy made a play for you, huh? <laughs> play, three forward passes, and by the way, he's not old. Well, what did he do? Did he chase you around the necktie counter? Oh, he asked me to lunch. Oh, why didn't you go? Well, I'm meeting him later, 5.30, with the layout. So whip me up something to show him, will you? Also, I promised him a small item on the front page about his Item? Shop. Yeah. We'll give him a lead story. Oh, oh wonderful, Jake, some silent, yeah. huh? Here, darling. First time a woman ever got the best of that trout. Where did Casanova stay in New York? Hey, why don't we put his picture on the front page, too? I told him he would. Jake, you got any old cuts and pictures of Myron Trout? Yeah, we got a picture of him on a bearskin rug someplace. Guess we better look in the morgue. No, we had a morgue, Jake. Yeah, it's under sister. Remember, you used them old pictures to make a mattress. Heavens above. Here, dear. Oh, there you go. Oh. Here, dear. Look at that. Well, look at that. Hey, now, guys. Oh, hello, Mr. Trout. Yes, I'm glad you called it. Bob McAvoy, the new editor. Yeah, Jane McAvoy's husband. Now, Mr. Trout. The... <coughs> Mr. Trout, you need that, eh? Mr. Trout. Goodbye, Mr. Trout. Well, that's stinker. Come on, Bob. His ad isn't that important. Darling, no one ad is that important. It's all the ads we don't get. And the subscriptions. Jane, Jane, we've been here two months now and look at us. Look at the way we all work. It's bad enough not being able to earn a living. We can't even lead normal lives. <laughs> we've never led normal lives. I'll take it easy, you two. You remember what you were trying to prove when you took over the Eden Archive? We proved it. We don't belong here. I'm afraid we belong back in New York. Oh, darling. We are not going back to New York. Darling, 703 paid subscriptions, and we're lucky if we meet the payroll this I week. I know, dear, but we're still not... Here it not... is. Oh. Oh. If a picture of Myron Trout in a bearskin rug will cheer you up, there it is. I ain't so sure that's Myron Trout. Huh? Well, Matthew. Yeah? Take a gander at this picture. I ain't so sure. Is that Myron Trout when he was a little baby, or is it George Wilkins when he was? Peterson's oldest boy. No, well, that's either Myron Trout or George Wilkins. Peterson's oldest boy. I'm inclined to think it's George Wilkins. Peterson's oldest boy. <laughs> You're both wrong. It's Susie Withers, age six months. Jake, Matthew, can you identify any of these old pictures? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about that one? <laughs> My goodness, that's the house I was born in. No, oh, that's the old slaughterhouse. Now, just a minute. Hey, you're both wrong. It's the Eden High School. Mr. Pictures, huh? What is it? Who is it? Can you identify the old picture in this week's archive? And the first five people who can win free, free subscriptions. subscriptions. Wait, it's Isabel Sanders. Uh, no. no, no, it couldn't be, but she looks so familiar. Let me see that. Let me see it. But that's me. Oh, oh, my oh, my oh, oh, she has oh, me when I was sick. Are you oh. sure? Oh. Mel, give me the archive. Give Grandma. Here you are, Mr. Peterson. Have you got another picture this week, Steve? Sure have. This group picture number two. Oh, Steve. Just a minute. You better get me five more papers, Steve. Hi, Fred. Hello, Janie. Good morning, Mr. Sweetser. Five. Ooh, better make it ten, Mrs. McAvoy. Oh. This who is it game of yours is getting to be the highlight of the week around here. Good. This week is what is it? Oh. I was going to pay for it. Better get it this time. Almost had a winner last week. Isn't it beautiful? So grand and proud looking. I'd love to have a house like that. Excuse me, Miss McAvoy. I make up two tents. Uh, Mr. Sweetser, I... Fred? Yeah. Fred, what's wrong? What's wrong with what, Janie? Well, they took one look at the archive and just ran. What is it? Is Bob in the office? Yeah. Excuse me, Janie. Uh, Fred, I'll be I... right back. But oh, Mrs. McAvoy, I simply adore that strictly personal column your husband's writing. Oh. Boy. Uh, friend. Baby. Do you know what you've done? With that picture on the front page, you're going to be swimming in cancellation. Do you know what that is? 
Sure, it's the old George Weatherfield Mansion. At least that's what it said in the back of the photograph. Well, that's correct. Only we don't call it the George Weatherfield Mansion anymore. He died several years ago, and he willed it to an old friend of his in Seattle, a Mrs. Lucinda Holmes. Well, Mrs. Holmes showed up and took over in a big way. And ever since then, some of our citizens have regarded her as the serpent in our little Garden of Eden. They tried to get rid of her, but she wouldn't budge. Well, why should she? It's her home, isn't it? Well, you see, son, it isn't exactly a home anymore. Lucy has made it into a... Uh, an inn, you know, where a fella can take a lady and be sure that his wife doesn't know about it. You know, for a few drinks, and dining, and dancing, and... You mean... Uh -huh. Oh, no. Oh, brother. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Bob, You're right. well, what's the matter with the archive this week? Everyone's acting so strangely, and even you, Fred. Now, well, what... I, I'm very sorry, Jane. Excuse me, I have to get back to the office. Uh, Bob will tell you what it's all about. Well... <laughs> Bob, what is it? Darling, what? darling, sit down. Yeah? Baby, this mansion... Well, why didn't Jake or Matthew tell us? Honey, those two boys lead very sheltered lives. Where's the editor of this Bingville Bugle? Right here. Well, I'm Mrs. Lucinda Holmes. H how do you do, Mrs. Holmes? Uh, I'm Mrs. Vacamoy, and this is my husband, Bob. Uh, won't you come in? What happened to the old goat who used to run this paper? He died. He was dead when he ran it. It's a smart little dress, Mrs. McAvoy. Where'd you get it? Uh, in New York. You look like a regular guy. Well, thank you. So what's your case against me? Well, Mrs. Holmes... And what's the big idea of putting this on your front page? Well, Mrs. Holmes, we didn't realize when we published it that... Uh... Didn't realize what? Well... Well, Mrs. Holmes, we didn't know that uh, it wasn't still the Weatherfield Mansion and that you don't like publicity. <laughs> Oh, what's that? Oh, that's just sister. She's hungry. Come on, darling. Oh, I know you are oh, hungry. Oh, she's cute. Oh, of course she's cute. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Well, next week's issue? Where do the rest of you sleep? In the desk? <laughs> well, look, we didn't mean to offend anybody when we published that picture. Hello? Hello? You folks losing business on account of me? On account of the picture. Same thing. Look, I'll take a subscription, and while I'm at it, I'll take an ad. So write something good and snappy about the San Fernando Serenaders. That's the new three-piece band I got coming in on Saturday. No, uh, I guess not. That would close you up for sure. Mrs. Holmes, uh, would you consider taking an ad for someone else? Someone else? Yeah, yeah, wait just a minute. There, there it is. Ladies' Aid, Cover Dish Supper and Bazaar. Oh, they're trying so hard to raise money for a new orphanage, and they really need the publicity. All right, I'll do it. For oh. the ladies' aid, I'll go for a full page. Oh, that's wonderful. Say, how'd you like to have me send the San Fernando Serenaders down to play for them, too? Huh? <laughs> 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 Mr. McAvoy. Yes? We represent the Women's Auxiliary of the Better Eden Club. This is a complete list of our members. We would all like our subscriptions terminated at once. The minutes of our last meeting for your next edition. And be sure you put it on the front page. And this time, please don't misspell my name. It's Dow with a D, not a C. The Outcasts of Eden. Uh, why don't we have a contest? Darling, what do you call what just flopped? Oh, no. No, no, dear. I mean, I, I mean a real contest. Why don't we give away something free? Uh, give away a free chance with every subscription on, uh, well, dishes or something. Dishes? Huh? Yeah. Dishes? Why not give away a car? Are you kidding? What car? Any car. A brand new one. If you're gonna do something, do it big. Make the prize worthwhile. After all, you almost gave me away. <laughs> I've got a hundred new 
prescriptions. What have you got? 29 renewals. Oh, gee. Maybe we should have stuck to dishes, huh? The trouble with you kids is you don't get out and meet the people. We don't, huh? How would you like to come pounding pavements with Sister and me tomorrow morning? I mean, you don't meet them socially. Oh, Fred. If you're going to promote a contest like this, you've got to make yourself popular. Well, meet wives, meet families, join their clubs, attend their meetings, go to their parties. Fred, we haven't got the time. Jane and I hardly see each other now. Oh, no, no he's right, Fred. Anyway, I, th I think it's kind of cheating to all suddenly become a joiner just because we're running a contest. Well, how about the merchants and professional men around here? You don't think what they're doing is cheating, do you? Oh, no. no of course not. Well, they join clubs because it's good for their business. Oh. Well, if it's good for business... Darling, let's cheat a little, huh? Oh. First thing I'm going to do is make you a member of the J.C. Hello, Nellie. Give me 945J. Darling, what's a J.C.? What's he talking about? $25, Mr. Jones. $25. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Bob McAvoy, he ought to make quite a donation, and you know why. He's the one who's going to give away the new car. <laughs> well, all I've got is the grocery money, seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all get you back. Oh, I'm glad you finally got here. I'm so sorry I'm late, Mrs. Brown, but Mr. McAvoy didn't get back from his meeting until about 20 minutes ago, and I had to check some copy with you. Well, well you'd better hurry on down. Yes, sir. Uh, Oh, I see that our guest speaker has arrived. Oh, if you'll just step down here, Mrs. McAvoy. Oh! Oh! oh. I'm all right, I'm all right, I think. As the newest member of the literary club, I've been tempted to tell you about the first book I ever read. Uh, thank you. As the newest member of the Eden Elementary Parent Teachers Association, I would like to congratulate you on the wonderful job I think you've been doing. house on the way home. Go ahead, fellas, get in the car. And Stevie, look out for sister. Okay, let's go. Mr. Barker, mm -hmm. I'm Jane McAvoy of the Archive, oh, Stevie's mother. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's wonderful that you're helping these kids with their 4-H work. Well, 4-H is good work. Right now, I got plenty of time for it. Uh, Mr. Bartlett, did, um, did Stevie tell you about our wonderful contest? Yes, yes, he did. Well, did he tell you that with each new subscription, we're giving away a free chance on a new automobile? Waste of time trying to sell me a subscription. Oh, oh I could use a new car, all right. But if you were selling chances on a good long rainfall, I might be interested. Oh, you mean to water your crops? Well, why don't you irrigate? With what? Don't you know how long it's been since we've had rain? Three months. Wait a minute. You wouldn't take that to be wheat now, would you? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bartlett. We've just been so busy trying to get people interested in the archive, I just didn't realize. Well, that's a fine thing for the wife of the editor to admit, isn't it? Well, if you want to be blunt about it, it is. Here, us farmers are suffering from drought, and all you read in the archive is what kind of ice cream and cake some old lady served to a lot of other old ladies. Well, I just ain't interested. Jake, I... Oh, no, not again. Fresh day, Miss Jane. Uh, yeah. All right. Hey! Oh, Jamie, Jamie, <laughs> darling. 
Oh. oh, my, it's nice to see you. You're looking very well these days. Oh, you look just beautiful. Oh, I don't. I'm tired, I'm hot, but I'm oh, glad you think no, I look beautiful. Just... <laughs> oh, let me look at you. Did you come back in the Air Force? Huh? Oh, this is my Scoutmaster's uniform. Oh. Did you get my note about yes, it? Yes, dear, I did. I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, gotta run. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, wait a minute. You can't go yet. There's a story you've got to write about the drought. I haven't got the time. What drought? <laughs> That's what I said, too. What drought? And it's something we should have been reporting on our front page for months now. Okay, you write a story. No, honey, it shouldn't be a story. It should be an editorial. Darling, I've already written the editorial for this week. It's about the contest. Well, since the press is broken down, we can change it. Anyway, this is more important than the contest. Honey, there's nothing more important than this contest, believe me. Rain is for those farmers. But an editorial in the archive's not going to bring rain. Yes, but it might start the people of Eden praying for it, huh? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I'll write a new editorial. All right, darling. And listen, uh, on your way back, will you bring some uh, rye bread and, uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, 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 paper clips and a stop red lipstick, huh? Rye bread, paper clips, uh, stop red lipstick. She'd make a very interesting sandwich. <laughs> I love you. Scouts on her? Scouts on her. Get Mr. Dow a raincoat. He already has one. Uh, what do you mean a raincoat? Well, I declare. All you got to do to make it rain, so he says, is have an airplane, some dry ice, and of course the proper cloud formation. You mean that editor's really going to make it rain? Is he really going to give away a new automobile? Certainly. That is, everybody says so, isn't he? All I know is they walk in here from New York, so they say to set up shop. The next thing you know, they're promoting all kinds of fancy contests. Well, Mr. Trout, are you inferring? To each his own opinion, Mrs. Dow. Personally, I'd be suspicious of any man who let his wife pose as a single woman to solicit advertising from another man. You mean that, that Jane McAvoy? I'm not mentioning any names. Well, I'm not afraid to mention names, and I won't misspell them either. Oh, Mr. Dow likes his tie. Gentlemen, we have an even 100 renewals and 406 new subscriptions and a cash total of $1,265. Is that good? Huh? Oh, uh, I don't think so, son. How are we going to pay for that car we're supposed to give away? You know, some people don't think we're really going to give away an automobile. Who doesn't think so? Why don't you pay any attention to them? Oh, now, wait a minute, dear. With a contest going like this, we've got to pay attention. Bob. You take this money and go and make a down payment on the car right now. And we'll get it on display as quickly as possible. Hmm? Archive. No, no, this is not the Acme Ice Company. No, it's the... Wait, wait, wait. That's for me. Oh. Hey, dear. Hello, Acme. No, no, not the airport. Bring it here. Darling, uh... For my rain experiment. When are you going to make it rain, Dad? Well, Stevie, according to my research here, if I could just wow. get a super cool clock... Let us decide what to do about the automobile first. Well, I thought we decided that. Oh. Wait a minute, hon, I'll get that. Archive. Hello, Chet. Chet down at the airport, got some weather reports he wants to read to me. Oh, yeah, dear. Oh, no, wait a minute, Chet. There are a couple of theories about that. Now, about 14,000 feet over Mount Greylock in Massachusetts. Hello, Janie. Oh, hi, Fred. They found a super cool It looks like we hit the jack. What do you mean? Mrs. Holmes got almost $300 worth of Mrs. Oh, Fred, how wonderful. And you don't have to send a paper to most of them. She says all they wanted was a chance on the car. What do you mean? It's a very good paper. They bought the tickets, they're going to get the paper. Here, honey, you count those. You get them all in order. Sure. All right, so we don't want snow. But all that snow evaporated before it hit the ground, didn't it? And the experiment was successful. Well, they used a spray nozzle generator. They seeded the air continuously from dawn to a little after dusk. Package from Mr. McAvoy. Wait a minute, Chet. Oh, what is it? 50 pounds of dry ice. Oh. Excuse me, Chet. My dry ice just can't keep me posted. I think if you want to put this over here for me. Do you know what we have in this little box? Yeah, 50 pounds of dry ice. It's more than that. It's magic. It's the end of the drought. It's oh. COD, too. $2.50. Uh, pay the man, will you, darling? Yes, dear. There you are. Oh, Fred, give me 50 cents, will you? 50 cents. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Now, Jane. let me... Yeah? Come here, will you? Uh... Yes, dear. Oh, sister's bottle. Excuse me, Matthew. Yes, dear. Yeah, what is it? Jane, 
Yeah. Chet Dunn just had a weather report from San Francisco. Do you know that there were cumulus clouds forming over southern Oregon? Now, cumulus or not, you better come out of those clouds, but this contest is over. Yeah, but, hon, I promised the farmers rain, didn't I? It was your idea. Well, I didn't ask you to make the rain. I just asked to write an editorial. Yeah, about. I know, I know. But if I get the proper cloud formation, I tell you, I can't miss. I'm counting the days. All right, darling. All right. You count the days, huh? I'll count the money. Oh! Boy, you promised to show us how to run a newspaper. Oh, oh no, no. Excuse me, men. Jane. Okay, fellas. Okay, fellas. Okay. Uh, Matthew here is going to show you how to run the line of type. Now, pay very close attention, will you? The first thing you do, you have to. Hey, here. Don't, don't, don't. Get Bob. Keep your hands away from that wheel. Stand back, boys. How many, Mr. Grant? Well, I can't use more than one subscription, can I? Well, no, but a year's subscription to the archive would make a lovely present for a friend, and it would give you two chances to win. Uh, and besides saving me from making change, huh? Uh, <laughs> thank you. There you are. Now, if you'll just fill in the stud there, please. We did all right. Here comes a boy on a bearskin rug. Oh, you. Excuse me. Good morning, Mr. Trout. Good morning. Nice car, Mac. Pretty nifty. Oh, I'm glad you like it. But what happened to that wet stuff you promised to deliver to the farmers? Still waiting for those cumulus clouds. How long do you think we've been waiting? Yeah, when is it going to rain? Not today, but don't give up hope. All I need is the right cloud. Jane? Yes? Jane, you know, I can't make up page one. Huh? Tonight's night is a big dance and a drawing for the car, and I've got to save a box on the front page to announce the winner. Yes, dear, I know you do. Honey, where are your club notes? I'm making up page two. Oh, well, I, I haven't done them yet, dear. Honey, I'm making up page two. Well, uh, put something else on page two, and I'll have them ready by page four. Put what? Uh, put what where? Put what on page two? Oh, oh my cooking column. What, have you written that? <laughs> oh, darling, I never write my cooking column. I just take some recipes out of this old cookbook here. Uh, uh, here, uh, give it to Matthew. He'll know what to do with it. Cumulus cloud, cumulus cloud, cumulus cloud. But Fred didn't. It's a great big fat juicy one. What? Jane, call the airport. Tell Chet Dunn to get that plane out of the hangar and start firing it up. No, I've got everything. Look at that cloud. See, cumulus cloud. No, 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 no. Call the airport first. Yeah. Uh, hello, Nell. Yeah, Nell, get me cumulus. Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 Chet Dunn at the airport. <laughs> Sure you got that dry ice fine enough? Positive. How do those clouds look to you now? Blacker than ever. It's four of them now. Well, put on your hip boots and buy yourself an umbrella, boy. We're off. What's that? I'm afraid it's what you think it is. Well, let's go back. outside in this kind of weather. Oh, Dad, I'm just taking me to the hotel. 
and it's our first extra. Let it go inside before you get your beak with Genius. Cloud. You yes. certainly Jane, did. Dear, uh, I tried to phone you, honey. Oh, I'm sorry. You know I had to take the receiver off the hook. Everyone in town has been calling to congratulate you. Oh, uh, Haven't they, well, Jane? they shouldn't sure. do that. Oh, they certainly should have the way they've been laughing at you. Oh, darling. I want to apologize for the way I behaved, too. I just thought that you were neglecting the contest. And those farmers. You know what they're going to think? They're going to think you're a magician. Oh, darling, you are a magician. <laughs> And now, I think you better go right on upstairs and take a nice warm shower. Your tux is all laid out for you. My tux? Yeah, the drawing for the car. We're due at the Lodge Hall in 25 minutes. Yeah, but darling, I don't have to wear my tux. Oh, do I? this is our first chance to dress up since we arrived in Eden, and we want to do it right, don't we? Okay, give me five minutes. <laughs> You've got it. I wonder how much of a down payment they'd want on a new press. Feeding what? Seeding. Seeding the clouds. Seeding? Yes. Oh, no. You see, would you like some lemonade, Miss Fees? Oh, yes, thank you. You sit right here. I'll be right back. Thank you. You're up. Oh, don't forget, Bob. Speech next Tuesday. Okay, I'll... Mr. McAvoy? Yes. James Bartlett speaking. This is Mrs. Bartlett. Mrs. How Bartlett. do you do? Well, I've kept my promise to your wife. You did? Well, that's fine. What promise? I told the little lady if you brought rain, I'd buy a subscription. Well, here it is. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good luck. Come on, Mama. Matthew, turn on the light. The, the light, yes. Tidy. Mm. Tidy? Diaper. Turn out the light and go to sleep.
everybody gather round. First, I want to welcome you all in the name of the Nightingale Lodge to our annual affair. Now, um, before we serve supper, we're going to have the drawing to see who will win the automobile, which is to be given away by our rain-making editor. <laughs> and his beautiful wife, Jane. <laughs> and now, I want to introduce the man who's going to draw the lucky number. Mayor Hull. Thank you, Mrs. Patch. Now, I know how eagerly you've all been awaiting my speech on the coming election. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll get on with the drive. <laughs> oh, just a minute, Your Honor. The winning number, three, oh, two. Right here. Oh. Well, oh, congratulations. 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 You started to hit the jackpot, didn't you? God bless you, Mrs. McAvoy. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Patch. Thanks. Oh. What'd you get this time? Same. Same as I did the first time or same as I did the second time? Same as you did second, third, and last time as you counted it. Eighteen dollars and... and... Thirty-two cents. Well, considering everything, we ought to be thankful that we made enough to pay for the car and... And, and we also got 1,120 new subscriptions and 300 renewals. That's not bad, you know. No, not bad, except now we can't handle it. Haven't got enough money to buy paper, let alone buy a new press. Well, farewell, you glamorous piece of machinery, wherever you are. $18 and 32 cents. What'll we do with it? Maybe grocery bill? I don't know. It's such an odd little sum. It doesn't seem to fit any bill we owe. I love you. You know, somehow tonight, $18 or $1,800. I'm very content. You know, I was feeling content one morning, way back, when you kissed me awake and... You shoved the copy of the editor and publisher in front of my sleep-filled eyes. Are you sorry? Oh, darling. You know, they like us here. Uh-huh. Is that what you mean by feeling content? Mm-hmm. Exactly. How long it's been since we went up those stairs together? Mm-hmm. I'm so used to writing a note first. I feel rather strange. <laughs> you know why everyone was so nice tonight? Your rain. It was your rain that did it. Oh, Bob. Darling. Mm -hmm. Darling, it wasn't my rain. Oh, so many happy people, so grateful. Jane. Yes, what? Jane. I said, what? What I'm trying to tell you is that it wasn't my rain. It was God's rain. What? Mm-hmm. Started before we got the plane off the ground. Oh, no, Bob. Oh, yes, Jane. And if you'd waited before you wrote that beautiful headline, I, I wouldn't have been standing up there like an idiot taking bows. Oh, darling, I'm oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Bob. Well, now, listen, I'll tell you what you do. 
You write one of your cute editorials about it, see? And make a joke of it, only tell them the truth. Because that's our paper's policy, you know. Well, on page one next Thursday. Oh, isn't that <laughs> awful? I just... Val! Has that been there all night? Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't you tell me? I was just so grateful that you hadn't sat on it. Oh. <laughs> well, good morning, Stevie. Good morning, Mommy. What time is it? 9.30. Why aren't you in school? No school today on kind of the rain. Well. From Daddy. Here she oh. is, all burped and dry. Good morning, darling. Thanks for letting me sleep late. Well, that's all right. Nothing much you can do anyway until the rain lets up. Great, isn't it? I'm going out of the bank. Maybe this will help us float alone, huh? <laughs> I hope so. Bye-bye. Mm, he said I could go with him. Mm -hmm. He isn't always so abrupt, sister. Honestly, he isn't. Usually he's very considerate and kind. And so clever. <laughs> But just between us girls, what do you suppose you'll do if they want snow for Christmas? If this rain stops, we'll go swimming in the pool. What pool? In the backyard. We ain't got no pool in the backyard. We have now. It's still raining. Ain't let up since you started it, Bob. Coming down just fine. Yep, awful good for the farmers. <laughs> this is it ever coming down? Yeah. No sign of it letting up? Oh, not a sign, not a sign. Joel Simpkin says that he's had to stop building on his new house. Why, on account of the rain? On account of the rain. He says if it keeps up two more days and two more nights like this, he's going to put an outboard motor on it. <laughs> no such thing as too much rain in California. Yeah, so I've heard, so I've heard. Would you like a cup of tea, Fred? I'd love a cup of tea. Why don't you look where you're rowing? Why don't you hold out your hand? Say, Jane, tell Bob that he can stop the rain any time now. Huh. Five days is enough, even for us farmers. Stevie! Stevie, you know that you're not supposed to play in here. But I can't go outside because it's still no, raining. No, 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 don't say it. Is it all right? Yeah, yeah, go on, play, Stevie, it's all right. This time, it's your turn. Archive. Yes, Mrs. Wallace. No, Mrs. Wallace, he ain't in. Her porch rocker just floated away. What does she want me to do, swim after it? Mrs. Wallace, I got a paper to print. All right, Mrs. Wallace, I won't print one for you. Go ahead, sue him. And I, for one, hold McAvoy personally responsible. Now, look, Myron, I practically promised him a loan for some newsprint. That was only the day after he started the ring. Now, just a minute, Myron. All I know is we were a peaceful, happy little town until the McAvoys descended on us, digging up old pictures and breaking down cumulus clouds. They should be asked to leave town. Now, Myron, as mayor of this town, I... As mayor of this town, you should do something about it. Do what? Well, call a meeting of the town council. See what they think should be done about this, this weather changer. It'll certainly count in your favor when you come up for re-election. I know the book says I shouldn't do this, but she's so sweet and soft and cuddly, I can't help it. What's the matter? Nothing. What particularly nothing? Rain, rain, go away. Just found out they're having a meeting tomorrow morning. Myron Trout's trying to figure out some way to get us out of town. <laughs> so what? 
There are hundreds of towns that'll roll out a red carpet for a man like you. Jane. Yeah? We're going back to New York. I just phoned the paper and got my old job back. Oh? <laughs> now, why didn't I think of that? Nice, steady job, steady salary every week. No worrying about subscriptions. No trying to sell ads to merchants who think Grover Cleveland is still president. Something I've got to tell you, though. Same old salary, same hours, nights, and one hitch. We've got to be there in six days. <laughs> Wish we had that car we gave away. Sure would be nice to drive back east in, wouldn't it? Well, let's see. First thing we have to do is to sell the paper. I'll run an ad in the editor and publisher. I'll explain to whoever it is that buys it. I'll explain to him the mistakes I made, the things I did wrong. Things we did wrong, dear. We'll have a good paper, whoever he is. He sure will. And we won't be any worse off than we were back in New York, will we? Well, we'll be much better off. We've got sister now. You know that you're very sweet. I certainly do hate to be happy at a time like this, but I just can't help it. We've got an awfully good marriage, you and I, Bob. Oh. Bakery basement flooded. Loss estimated at $400. And Myron Trout, damage to men's shop, $100. Damage to car fender, $25. Yes, but Mr. Mayor, aren't you forgetting that you said it would cost $500 to fix the bandstand and to, uh, to put the park back in shape? That's right. I want $210. I can't find my patio. Oh, of course, Clarissa. I have that down here. Uh, oh, the rest are small items. Do you want me to itemize them? Just give them the total. Well, it's just a little over $7,000. It's... $7,098.60. You hear that, McAvoy? Now, how about that? Now, Myron, please sit down. Mr. McAvoy, $7,000 is a great deal of money to a small community like Eden. And all the damage can be traced to the current rains. Therefore, we hold you responsible. Myron, Myron, you... sit down. Don't be such a babbit. Yes, Let the down. meeting sit decide down. what's sit what. Down. Right down. Right down. Myron, we better decide. We'd like to hear from you, Mr. McAvoy. Mayor Hull, I don't know what more to say except to say what I said before, that I did not start that rain. As Chet testified, it started before I got the plane off the ground. That's not the story Chet told the night of the dance. We needed the rain then. The only guy who was doing anything about getting us a little was Bob. It did start to rain before he got a chance to try out his scheme. But I felt he deserved a pat on the back for all of his troubles, and I still do. Mr. McAvoy has become a little tin god around here because of his rain. For what it's worth, I wrote an editorial telling the true story about the rain for Thursday's paper. But as is its custom, our press broke down. Well, do whatever you like about it. Come on, Jane. I'll see you later, Fred. Chet. Dear. Just a moment. Mr. Mayor. May a lady have a word? Yes, Mrs. McAvoy, of course. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, being a woman, as well as my husband's partner in the archive, I can't resist being first with the news. I'm afraid it's going to be good news to some. And I'm very happy to say it's going to be sad news to others. Bob and I are leaving Eden. And, and so I want to say goodbye and I want to thank you. Some wonderful things have happened to us here. Our daughter was born here. And Stevie and Bob and I have made some very dear friends. But as for me personally, I saw a man come face to face with a dream of his here. And believe me, that's an experience too few wives have ever had. You saw a stranger move into your town with his family. To Bob, there are no strangers, just people he hasn't met yet. And you saw a man joining clubs and civic groups and writing little editorials and reporting on the trivial happenings of everyday people. And with the exception of that silly cloud seeding, doing nothing big at all. Nothing to shake the world. Well, trivial happenings are the world. 
they are a people. And if you believe in the fundamental worth and goodness of the people right around you, then you believe in the fundamental goodness of America and the world. Bob believed that. That's why we came here. And Bob will always believe it. That's why we can never really be hurt. But I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you that he's leaving, because you'll miss him. And as for us, well, there's nothing really to be sorry about. And I'm so proud he didn't fail you. But then he couldn't fail anyone. Because he's that special kind of man. Well, that's about all I have to say. Except, uh, I want to thank you again. And I'm glad we came. Mrs. McAvoy, it's all very well, but it doesn't answer my only concern. What? The $7,000 damage caused by your husband's rain. Oh, that? Well, Mr. Trout, if you'll be kind enough to come to the archive at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we hope to give you that answer. And, uh, by the way, that goes for all of you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um. What's this about that four o'clock business? Why'd you ask him to come by? Oh, darling, let me give you a pleasant surprise for once, huh? You'll see. Hi, Jake. Come on in. I just come up to get sister's lunch. Why, she had her lunch an hour ago. Well, I'd better start warming her next bottle. Is there anything I can do for you? Not that I want to. Jake, you know all the back pay that we owe both you and Matthew. Well, that's our most important debt, and we'll send it to you just... Now, you just keep still about that. You don't owe Matthew and me anything. Janie, you remember that first headline Bob wrote? Editor's wife brings new life to archive? Let me tell you something. You and Bob and Stevie and little sister brought new life to Matthew and me. You just two old misfits dying on the vine till you come along. I guess I better go get that bottle. Oh, darling, don't you start a tune now. All packed, Stevie? Yes, Ted. Hi, hey, Jake. Jake. Isn't that Myron Trout coming over here? Look at that whole crown. Yeah, that, that's Van Vliet and the mayor with him. That, they're not on the way. Old Lady Dow, that one wet hen. I hope they fall in the mud. They I got no business over here. What, what do they want to come over here for? What do they want to bother the McAvoys? They're such nice kids. Why don't they stay out there? Why don't you Jake? people stay home and mind your own business? This is private property. Well, guess that's everything. Mm -hmm. Except this. Oh. Hey, might as well use the same ad. One small addition to the copy. No rainmakers need apply. <laughs> All set? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You drove them to a point where they're leaving. Now, well, what else no, do you want? Just, got a, minute. No right just to come a minute. Just a minute, Matt. Jake, Matt, Mrs. McAvoy asked us to be here at four. She's oh. got something she wants to say to us, and we got something to say to them. They're a little early. You didn't really think we'd let you get away from us, did you? Mr. McAvoy, Eden is known in this part of the country as the friendly town. I'm afraid we'll have to change our slogan if you don't change your mind and give us another chance. I don't understand. When we left the meeting, you all appeared to be... Behaving very badly. We certainly did. What Janie said made us stop long enough to take a good look at the situation. Well, I don't see what all this fuss is about. The rain was a good thing for us farmers. I'm glad, Mr. Bartlett. Uh, glad it was good for somebody. Well, it was good for a lot of people. I know some who sold enough umbrellas and raincoats to retire. What? Well, I, I did sell quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> It stopped raining. Stop raining. Oh, hi. Here, Bob. Hold sisters. And my raincoat. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just a minute. Now, don't go away. I'll be right back. Are you Mr. Loomis? Please, sir.
say yes? Yes. Oh, good. Come right with me. Uh, you don't need that. It's not raining. So it has. So it has. Come along. Now, who can that be? Maybe that's Janie's four o'clock phantom. Excuse me. Come right this way, Mr. Loomis. Uh, thank you. Come right in here. Uh, Mr. Mayor and ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Loomis, and he has some information that I think you should know. Go ahead, Mr. Loomis. Uh, he, uh, oh, forgive me just a minute. Mr. Loomis is from the United States Weather Service at Fresno. You just want me to tell them... Yes, just what you told me on the phone this morning, if you will, please. Frontogenesis occurs along the west and northwest edges of the Pacific anticyclone. Normally, the pathway of the microchrome cyclones in the North Pacific lies along the 40th to 45th parallel of... What's he trying to say with all this double talk? Myron, be quiet. Well, not that it matters, Jane, but is this gentleman trying to tell us that Bob was not responsible for the rain? But of course he wasn't. My, when the frontogenesis Thank occurs in the west and the northwest... Thank you very much, Mr. Loomis. Thank you very much. I'll take her now, dear. Come on, doll, baby. Oh. But, uh, but I haven't started to explain. I'm sure they don't quite understand. Oh, I think they understand. Frontus genesis, why anyone can understand that. Yes, in fact, we <laughs> all understand each other so well that uh, uh, we're about to ask Mr. Van Fleet for a loan to buy a new press. A loan? Well, I... We'll see. A new press. A new press. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> new press, a new press. <laughs> well, wait, yeah, Jay, look, it's running. Oh, I've got the press, it's working. Jay, just get the movement and start it off. Hey, Jane Downing, what are we going to do about these? Look, goodbye to eat. Well, uh, let's just save them for a rainy day. <laughs>